delighted this morning to be joined by an old friend of mine, Les Mallon, who's the a managing director of a Patizia UK and also president elect or president of the AEA. Correct. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, great to see you and thank you for giving us a little bit of your time. I don't know if at the moment it's easy to give up a little bit of time for, for something like this because we've got more time in our hands or difficult because you've so many issues to resolve and so many other problems going on that need to get a, a solution for. I don't know what the situation is. Um, I think it, in theory it should be easier, but in, in reality it's probably more difficult at the moment because with a shortage of staff, um, me, I'm doing the same as most other people, I suppose, in my position. I'm, I'm doing sort of 90% of everybody else's jobs as well. So it could be parts, it could be forklift, it can be invoicing, and if I'm lucky to get some machinery and parts out, it's, it's a jack of all trades. Great to get back and see what everybody else's job's like as well. It'll be like the old days in many ways. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I actually uh, learned all the roles before I put other people into them, otherwise it would have been quite difficult, I think, to to actually, uh, you know, pick everything up. Now, I know the situation we are in is exceptional. Nobody could have anticipated what's going on. But in your position, Les, you've got Etesia as a French company, Palenque is a French company. They had um, the virus arrive earlier than it arrived in our shores. Was that, did that give you an opportunity to anticipate what problems you're going to have to be facing or did it not really help at all? Uh, I think you're right. I mean, having uh, European owners of the business as well as uh, colleagues down in the south, we've encountered some of the problems fairly early on. Uh, I have to say it hasn't really changed of their reactions across in France. They are still very much in a... In a uh, in a lockdown situation regardless of what you hear um, and they're very much a reduced working um, relationship majority of the sales staff from both our Artesia company and Pelenc are still furloughed um, or the French equivalent of furlough uh, which is even more strict than our end um, you know when they're working from home they have set times that they can and can't do anything so you may have like a Monday afternoon and a Tuesday morning and that's it they're not allowed to do anything else the rest of the week um, so it becomes challenging when you have to try and work with people and, and find out really what's happening, if you like. My own staff up in, in the uh, Tizia factory, um, I have two girls who come in and do the export side of it, uh, particularly for the UK. They alternate the jobs, so the one's in one day, one's in another, and there's an awful lot of catch up and, and trying to you know, try and keep everybody safe, really. So it's very difficult still, very, very difficult. So what were your first thoughts? I mean, I know it was difficult and the, the, the um, immense nature of it has um, become more and more apparent to us as the, the weeks and months have gone on. Um, where are your first thoughts, right, how are we going to continue business or um, how are we going to service our customers or was it more basic like that? Was how are we going to survive? I think um, it was really, it was a case how more than anything else because from my situation here it was a case of saying well which staff can come in which staff are most important to service the dealers and then are there dealers to be serviced because when it first started the first two or three weeks there were very few people open or expecting us to be open so yeah. quite often i sat here with absolutely no calls coming in from one day to the next Mm. And then as people realized we were still getting stuff out the door where we could, then it, it increased a little bit. But I think the majority of the calls I had in the first four or five weeks were for an end users struggling to find spare parts and find dealers open. Mm. Um, because I found that even some dealerships where they were working, if people rang the telephones, the telephone said they were closed. So there was a very sort of mixed um, reaction, if you like, in amongst the customers and dealerships. Mm -hmm. So that was quite difficult to start with. And then obviously the French lockdown meant that absolutely nothing came out of the factory until about a fortnight ago when we started to resume some deliveries. Um, and I've had four containers in the last two weeks. Um, everything's gone out the door, uh, which I'm very, very pleased about because I must admit when the lockdown started, I really expected a lot of orders from local authorities and people like that to be cancelled um, because usually if the product's not into them before March, or before the end of March, April budgets, you usually see a cancellation of stuff from there on. Mm -hmm. So it's been nice that we're now sort of moving machinery out 
and it has not a single order has ever been cancelled. So that that's that's a nice feeling to have so far. Well, I suppose in many ways, much of your product line is going to essential key workers because we Correct. do need to have grass cut, uh, uh, verges cut, um, grass keeps growing. So from that perspective, you know, you're, it's funny because I had something in the magazine a few years, I think it's around about Brexit time or prior to that, that the one profession I thought would be perfect would be hairdressing because hair always grows. But now there's problems there. They can't because of the self the, the social distancing. So perhaps the one industry that uh, is safe is grass cutting because we don't have to self-isolate when it comes to grass cutting because it's still going to grow. I think the, the problem, you're, you're right in what you're saying, but the problem has come certainly with local authorities that grass cutting is not seen to be the most important thing for, to, for people to do. And we have to realise that the, the workers that normally are cutting grass have been taken away in a lot of cases to do other jobs where they've lost key staff from, from other activities like the bins or whatever else it happens to be. So in a lot of cases, the grass has been left as, as not being the most important thing to do. But as the weeks have gone by, then obviously the gangs have started to get back into in work again and adapt into how they need to do it for the future. And the products now start to catch up with it, which I'm very grateful for because I must admit, you know, when it started, I thought that's an awful lot of machines going to get cancelled off. But So that's good news for us. Good news. It's, it's, it's moving. With your Atesia hat on, what do you see about the medium and long term future? Do you, um, obviously things are not going to come back to normal, but um, do you see it being a workable scenario going forward into the medium and long term? Um, I think, um, as far as Atesia is concerned, everything has to change in the way we operate, both from the manufacturing side in France and the way we work in the UK. I don't think things are going to go back to how we see normal. Um, for at least this year and, and even into next year I don't see it being back into the way we used to do things in the past so um, from a manufacturing point of view we've always run well for a number of years now we've run the uh, just-in-time type of man manufacturing process and we're finding issues there now because we we like many manufacturers rely on outside suppliers for different components and although the Atesia factory is producing product albeit limited because we have a limited number of people back on the work lines anything comes to a, a complete stop if we can't get components from the supplier and there are a lot of suppliers we rely on which are no which are even not in business at the moment or have actually shut the doors completely um, so that will have a knock-on effect as we go through the, the next months either people reopening the premises or in some cases we will have to look for completely new suppliers where they they shut and will never open again mm -hmm. um so i can see a supply chain becoming a lot slower um, and a lot more difficult to to follow for the next six nine months maybe even a year mm -hmm. now so with a big difference yeah now with your aea hat on um what do you see is the role of the association within these tricky times and then what is your role within the role um in the association at the moment well well i think um <laughs> i'm probably the first president elect or president of the aea to, to have a, a, a come into a role if you like which has got so much uncertainties in it because the year ahead of us as as we know has got covid19 which is around everybody's necks and the impact that's having on the whole of the trade and we've got Brexit still looming on our doors in, in just a few months' time. Um, so we've got a, like a double whammy this year that we've got to deal with. Uh, training that we do, training for business is on hold. So that means there's another sector that uh, is not going to happen this year. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a very, very interesting 12 months of uh, presidency to, to really try and adapt to various different conditions, which... I don't think anybody expected to, us to have to deal with in, in you know, in one 12 month period even. Now in practical terms, what can the, the AEA do? Did, as you talked about training courses, is that the sort of thing ensuring that the information lines are secure and everybody has the information they require to, to move forward? And as I say, you mentioned Brexit there. Uh, it's almost been forgotten about, but it was the biggest thing in our lives this time last year. Correct. Yes, I mean, you know, it's something which dominated our lives for, for a few years here and it seems to have been put on the back burner, but um, our government hasn't put it on the back burner. That's the adamant that we will leave at the end of the year. 
but negotiations are, are not possible to be done in the way that they were in the past. There's, there's no face-to-face -face negotiations, which as we all know as salesmen, face-to-face -face is about the best thing you can do in terms of selling something or purchasing something. So I don't see how that's going to, to um, come off nicely, if you like, um, over the period of time. But from the AEA point of view, um, we offer our members a hell of a lot of, of useful information regarding the current situations and what we think is, is a way forward. So the technical people and, and the uh, economics people back at the AEA constantly reviewing all the information that the governments are putting out, both from here and Europe, collating it in the best way they can for the membership to give the memberships, if you like, a one-stop shop to get all the information they need for our trade. Because, as you know, if you look through government websites and you listen to the news, there's so many different variations of, of uh, information that you get bogged down as the average person trying to work out what you should or shouldn't do. And the great thing with our teams back in, at the AEA is that they collate the information which is particularly... Uh, applied or needs to be applied to our industry and that saves a hell of a lot of work for individuals and puts them in the right direction for the future and I think now that's even more important than it's ever been in the past. And from a, from a personal perspective I know you travel quite a lot you're traveling back and forward to France you're traveling around the UK quite a lot travel is going to be something that changes as well we're going to whether we can all master this new form of technology the zoom meetings the google meetings the microsoft uh, meetings as well we're all going to have to get mastery of that technology and we're all going to, have to make sure we have decent wi-fi in our homes so I don't know how people's sales techniques will be over the over screens but it's going to have to improve I would imagine you're 100% right. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't see us going back to the old way of doing demonstrations and the old way of communicating with dealers even for a, a long, long time to come, as I said. So this type of meeting is going to be commonplace. And again, as you rightly say, working with French manufacturers, um, we're going to have to do the same with them. It's, it, it, to be fair, it's, it's great because it saves me spending a day driving or flying out to the Alsace region for a meeting that might take two or three hours and then work, work my way back again, I, you know, so I can do other things at the same time, the same as everybody else can. So it's a great way of doing it, but it doesn't take away the fact that there is also a lack of personal element and personal meetings still need to be made, but in a different way. You know, we, we still need that get together, that, that personal greeting, um, but we have to be looking at how we do that differently. The days of driving around the countryside, like some of the reps have done in the past, and just drive around, say hello, and have a cup of coffee and a chat, that's gone. That, that just doesn't happen. The telephone and the Zoom will have to take over that, from that type of thing. Yeah, anything we do now on the road has to be qualified. That's great, but it will mean that you'll miss out on some of that lovely wine that's produced around about the uh, area where the headquarters are over in France. Don't worry, I have a good supply, but can be put onto a container when needed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Les, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time this morning. And please pass on my best wishes to everyone back at the factory and in France as well. And I hope that this doesn't mean the end to face-to-face -to -face contact, because you're always great company. And I hope that I do get a chance to meet up with you sometime before too very long. Uh, likewise, uh, look forward to things getting back to some sort of normality in the future. Stay safe.